Hi everybody, my name is Aylette Ness and I am doing a study for a connection group this year. If you've ever felt anxious, suffered with anxiety like I have, I'm going to be doing Crash the Chatterbox because that chatterbox likes to whisper in your ear and get your anxieties all revved up. This book will help you to crash the chatterbox. Hey, good morning. I'm Pastor Paul. Welcome to Columbia Grove Covenant Church. Come on in. Hey, you're inside the building. Welcome. I'm sure by now you've been handed one of our bulletins. Don't forget our Love Like Jesus bracelets and decals. I'm sure you're smelling some great goodies and some coffee to your left. And on your right is our Love Like Jesus t-shirts and sweatshirts. Be sure you stop by the greeting desk, grab a name tag, We'd love to greet you by name. A little bit later in the service, we will be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion. During communion as well, our prayer team members will be in the front of the church. If you need prayer, they would love to pray with you. Well, that's all I got. Let's turn it over to the worship team. Well, good morning. Let's stand together and join in worship as we lift up the Lord's name.
my heart. Amen. Let's worship him today. He is our God. He's our king. He loves us. Let's remember that together. Those walls we call sin and shame But they were like prisons that we couldn't escape But he came and he died and he rose And those walls are rubble now Remember those giants we call death and grave mountains that stood in our way, but he came and he died and he rose, those giants are down. This is our God, this is who he is, he loves us. This is our God, this is what he does, he saves us. He bore the cross. Please, please have a seat. I'll get, my, I'll get my ears figured out here in a second. Well, you might notice the young guy, the young handsome dude, he's not here. You got the old goat. Um, he, uh, Wyatt's getting his wisdom, he got his wisdom teeth out. Yeah, I know. So Wyatt, if you're watching, there was a big note of sympathy, like a collective sigh of sympathy 
just right now. Anyways, well, thanks for being here today. You picked a great day because, did, take a deep, deep breath. What you smelling? You smelling tacos? <laughs> Do you know why? Because it's Taco Sunday, that's why. <laughs> Do you want to guess what we're having after church? You are so smart. That is fantastic. You figured it out. So it's Taco Sunday, and um, there has been a, 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 some wonderful, wonderful uh, folks. We've got big hand for, to Heather and Brett especially, because, uh, yeah, they did some serious taco, pre- taco. <laughs> she waves it off. She wa- I'm not, anyways. Uh, they put in a lot of work to make sure that everyone's got some tacos. But we've got a bit of an ulterior motive for these tacos because, you see, what we're hoping you will do is you'll enjoy some tasty, tasty, tasty tacos. And you'll get to meet some of our friendly, friendly, friendly connection group leaders today because today is our spring connection group kickoff. We've got all sorts of different connection groups. Hopefully, you picked up one of these. Did you take, do you have yours here? Did you pick, take it out? Because if you don't, you can put your hand up and we'll get one to you right away. Um, Because there's some wonderful, wonderful options for connection groups. We want you to have a 2 a.m. friend, um, somebody that you can call. We want you to be connected to other Christians. And while there's no magic bullet for that, connection groups really, really, really help. It's just a great way to grow in your faith. It's a great way. And it's a fun way to do it, too. So we just want you to be aware of those connection groups. And so while you're tasting them tasty tacos, you can be talking to some connection group leaders and just seeing how the Lord leads that and and what that means for you. So um, I should also mention we have connection cards in the seat pockets in front of you. That's a great way to give us feedback on, um, you know, what's going on in your life. How can we be praying for you or what your needs are or next steps? Or you can sign up for a connection group on one of those or ask about baptism or you know, are there dogs in heaven? Whatever you're wondering about, we, we, can, we, we read every single card. We respond to every single card. Um, and, and so that, and a little bit later in the service, baskets will be passed around. Put the connection cards in the baskets. All right. Now, she might be tired because she has been preparing taco stuff. But Heather's going to come up and she's going to pray for our kids. And look, you're, you're, you're making notes on, on these things. So what, what, what kind, of, kind of sneaky stuff are you up to? Oh. Yes. Is it emoji day? It's not emoji day. It's well, not kind emoji. of. No? No, it's just an activity. Okay. It's kind of a, a happy, happy, sad. We're going to determine a few things. So it's, it's nothing. It's, yes, sad. sure. Silly? Yep. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yeah. All right. I, I, so it's I, not I, like I, I haven't. I'm not invited. That's okay. <laughs> right. It's not like I haven't had just a few things on my on my plate this week. So we're just uh, we're pretty busy, but yeah. you know what? We're gonna wing it, and it'll be fine. And um, anyway, so we are gonna be talking about um, how the disciples are speaking with Jesus and how they are a little bit sad and maybe a little bit confused about why, why and where he's going. Yeah. You know, since last week we, we learned that, you know, he died for our sins. Well, and, and meeting Jesus after he rose from the dead, that yeah. would be a bit confusing at first because that doesn't It happen. might be just a little weird. Yes. You know, because most of the time when we see people that pass away, they, yeah. they don't right. come back to visit us. That's good to know. Right? Yeah. I would be a little terrified, I think. So um, I would be repenting a lot. (laughs) (laughs) What's happening? They they got their attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. So, um, but that's what we're going to be doing today. And we are starting a new verse of the month. Um, We are going to be introducing, we are going to be teaching the kids to sing John 1, verses 1 through 7 to song, and with sign language so that they can come up here and share it with you. Mm -hmm. Well, sort of. Yeah, that's, that is the right verse, but it's not that song. So it's a little, little, little different, but um, it's something that um, we do with homeschool with Andrew, and it's very catchy. And um, so I'm pretty excited about doing that. So, and we're looking forward to when we can come up here and share it with you. So anyway, 
Let's pray. Let us pray. Let's all just bow our heads and, and pray for our kids. Father God, we just thank you. We're just still thinking about and reflecting that you love us so much that you stretched your arms out this far on the cross and you died for our sins. You died for our sickness, for our pain, for our suffering. And you did that willingly because you love us this much. Father, we just thank you for, um, we just thank you for all the kids and all the volunteers. What an opportunity it is to share your word and help to bind that to their hearts so that when they come through with struggles and pain and confusion, that the thing that comes up in their mind is your word. Father, let that be a guide for them. And we just thank you for their openness, their loving hearts, and their seeking you. And Father, I just pray over our children's ministry volunteers, the giving and the love that they share with these children is amazing. And I am so blessed to have each and every one of them on our team. We thank you for sending them. We thank you for guiding them. We thank you for continuing to grow them. And Father, I just pray for the kids as they continue to learn about you and how much you love them and just help them to be open and hear and see and love you more. And we ask for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks, Heather. Uh, take a few moments, greet a few people around you. Um, if you, if you uh, see the back wall, wave towards the back wall, because then the Silver Nails, who are joining us from France right now, will be able to see you. Um, but we also have folks joining us from Arizona and Spokane and Everett. So anyways, uh, be friendly, talk to somebody, and uh, we're going to jump back into singing in about a minute. Sometimes in worship, it's helpful to just sing a song that's nothing but praise. Just remember who the Lord is. He's the one that gives us life and breath and every good thing. So I just invite us in these next moments as we sing this really, really simple worship song, just to focus our attention on Him, remember just remember his profound, his profound goodness. Sing along with me. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness. You give hope, you restore every heart that broken great are you Lord it's your breath it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour
Have a seat as Keith comes up and leads us in the time of con.
Morning, Columbia Grove. Great are you, Lord. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 tells us to pray continually. That means to pray a lot. Father, you are mighty beyond our comprehension. The complexity of your creation is amazing and your love is astounding. Lord, you are full of compassion and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. There is always forgiveness with you. We are thankful you are ever present. We continue to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. Jesus is the way, truth, and life. And we're thankful that through his work, we can have an eternity with you. We're grateful for the new life we see in springtime, green coming to the hills, and buds on the trees with mostly warmer temperatures. Father, we acknowledge and confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart, soul, and mind, and strength. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. Restore to us the joy of your salvation. Bind that up which is broken. Give light to our minds strength to our wills, and rest to our souls. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. We continue to pray for our governmental leaders as the elections draw near. Give incumbents and candidates wisdom and good judgment as they make decisions in the best interest of all. Father, show us how to be good stewards of the planet you have gifted us and how to join you in caring for the vulnerable and those on the margins of society, refugees, immigrants, hungry, persecuted, defenseless, poor, infants, and the elderly. We pray for the people of Ukraine and Russia, guard innocent lives, stop the invaders, strengthen the people and guide the spiritual and political leaders please intervene in the humanitarian crisis on our southern border guide our policy leaders and those on the front lines of justice public safety and aid we ask for a restoration of order and security throughout israel and gaza for the leaders of hamas to cease any further terrorist attacks on israel for special protection of all civilians, especially those who are in need of food and other essentials. Pray for the healing of all who have been wounded and the comfort of families of those who have been killed. Lord, please, please bring your lasting peace to the region. We pray for our shared work in Congo with World Vision and our many sponsored children there. We're thankful for the safe return of Brian and Sarah Bowes from their work in Kenya. We continue to pray for the Covenant Church Missionary Radio team at New Life Radio in Odessa, Ukraine, as they broadcast Christian radio. Lord, protect them in a dangerous environment. This week, we pray for the 69 million Christians in India where Hindu extremists sometimes target church leaders, their wives, and children with violence. Lord, please guard and keep them. May we learn from their brave example. We pray for the general needs within Columbia Grove for our spring connection groups. May those participating in them grow in their faith and deepen their relationships. For our youth ministry, strengthen our teens in their, their many cultural challenges they face. Strengthen their parents and raise up youth leaders and mentors. Guide us as we reach out to our neighbors and community, especially through the upcoming community playground. Touch those who are hurting, lonely, sick, in struggling marriages, struggling against addiction, looking for work, and asking for your direction. We pray for specific health needs within our church. 
Tammy Wilson, Evelyn Williams, Paul Collar, Daryl Goodman, Donna Shipper, Pat Forney's friend, Jen, Mackenzie Salgado, Christy Robinson's adopted daughter, Sandy, Elena Vargas, and Linda Link. Congregation, please take this time to lift your prayers to God silently or out loud. Father, open our ears and hearts to God's word as Pastor Andrew leads us today. Thank you, Jesus, as we come to the Father in your name. Thanks, Keith. And Brian, thanks. It is good having you back. That's so awesome. I, would, you, would you stay in that spot for just a moment? Actually, we're going to be a sermon illustration together in just a sec. Yeah, yeah. Did, did you see the look he gave me? He's like, what are you up to? No, I, I promise, this will be good. The, uh, so um, I, I love playing the guitar. You probably figured that out. I'm, I'm sad that, that Wyatt's not here, but I'm also, it's kind of fun to play again every now and again. Um, but I didn't, I actually learned the guitar in my mid-20s. Who here, like, like in your adult years, you learned an instrument? Okay, so, so, uh, some ukulele players. What, what instrument did you learn? Guitar. Wonderful. Okay, <laughs> we'll talk. All right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean to put you on the spot. I, mean, I, I got to tell you the story of how I decided to learn the guitar, because I'd been a keyboard player for some time. My first degree out of high school was at a music college as a vocalist and a keyboard player. And so um, right after that, after music college, I, I did a, a fair amount of travel, um, recorded a couple of albums, and, and then I ended up at this wonderful church in Yakima. And we were getting ready to, uh, to do a summer, like a, like a ministry trip, miss, missions trip. And so I was up in Alaska in some of the same villages where we've been sending teams for the last number of years. And... Um, They'd asked me to lead worship at Covenant Bible Camp, which is about three miles upriver from Unicle. Unicle is, is a village in the Norton Sound area of about five, six hundred people, and it's the larger village for the region. And the Bible Camp is about three miles upriver. So I took my keyboard. This isn't the, the actual keyboard, but it gives you an example. I took my keyboard and some speakers, and we, and we made the trip. We got them all in the boat. Little little boat and a little like twelve foot boat and went up and got up to the Bible camp and they're like we're so glad to have you here we're gonna be leading worship I'm like yeah that's gonna be great and they said well our generator's out is that a problem <laughs> I, I want to demonstrate for you what an electric keyboard sounds like without electricity are you ready <laughs> are you inspired. Me neither. I didn't know what to do. So, so uh, I, I was like three days. I'm the worship leader at this place. I'm like, uh, does anybody have a kazoo? I mean, what do you, do? I had no idea what to do other than I came home from that going, I need to learn an instrument that you can play around the campfire. And so in my mid twenties, I had to, to uh, relearn some things that I thought I knew because I was, I was a half decent keyboard player, but I, I, I picked up the guitar, and I had to learn some of the basics, again, on the guitar. Like, uh, should we try a, let's try, a, like, a, like, we're learning a G major scale. Oh, you're faster than me. Okay, let's, uh, um. You have to learn all this. Uh, thanks, Brian, by the way. <laughs> See, he, he, he's got them all, all the scales down. But I had to learn all, the, all this stuff. And, you, and, you're, and back, back then, you, you get like uh, tutorials on DVD. Do you remember those things? Yeah, yeah. Um, kids, you can ask your parents about those. People used to use those. Um, and, and VHS tape. Uh-huh. And, and, so, yeah, yeah, and to learn... All, you start to learn like your, your position one chords, your G, 
and, and your C and your D, which kind of looks like a triangle. And, and, you, and you have to, but the point is, the point is, is that in order to play the guitar or any instrument, it really does come down to learning some of these fundamental things. Now, the reason I bring that up is, is because we're going to be in a five-week series that really is about some kind of fundamental things. And uh, Thank you. <laughs> Can we give Brian a hand? Oh, it is so fun having him back. I love, have, I love playing with that man. Now, but you, you kind of have to learn the, there's, there's some things when, for, with any instrument or with any sport that they feel kind of fundamental and it can be tempting to, just because they are so fundamental to just go, oh, that's not very important. Well, we're going to be looking at some of these fundamental habits of Christianity. And so one temptation, of course, is to believe that they're not important. You know, I've been walking with the Lord for many years now. I don't need to think about those things. It's still good to get some review. Um, do you remember, the, do you, who remembers Vince Lombardi, famous football coach? Okay. His most famous speech, every, every time he'd get people together for training, he'd be talking to a room full of professional football players, and I bet you can finish this quote. Gentlemen, this is a... Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Let's, let's do that again, because, because, because we need to educate you, okay? Gentlemen, this is a... A football. Now, he is talking to a room full of highly paid professional football players. Do you think they not know what a, what a football is? That's not the point, though, is it? The point is that even for the best of teams, it really does come down to fundamentals. So whether that's the fundamentals of music, you learn your chords, you learn your scales, you learn your music theory, whether that's the fundamentals of a sport, like gentlemen, this is a football, or uh, if you're basketball, you learn how to dribble, you learn how to shoot. It, they're, they're just fundamental things. Well, there are the, these fundamentals of, of Christian living, and we're going to look at those. We like to, I like to call them the f five habits, or five love like Jesus habits. So the, the, the first liability with the five love like Jesus habits, you just go, I have, I have heard that one before, and we just blow it off. But, but here's the thing. So if you're new and you're new in following Jesus, this is going to be super practical. Take lots of notes. If you're stuck in your faith, and all of us have times we get stuck in our faith, it's also going to be really helpful. Because most of the time, the thing that we're, we've gotten stuck on ends up being one of the fundamentals. Or you just find yourself hungry for God, and I, and I hope that this increases. I hope that God is increasing his, your hunger for him. Um, it usually comes down to these fundamentals. Chances are, um, for, if you've been walking with the Lord for some time over the next five weeks, there's going to be some weeks you'll be like, no, I really do have that pretty solid. And, and that's good. And that's good. But there'll also probably be at least one that you'll go, yeah, I think the Lord's still working with me on that. So I would urge you, uh, if you possibly can, just come to all five, listen to all five, like make a five-week commitment to church, um, uh, no matter where you are in your walk, there'll be at least one. And if you happen to be, if, if, if it's a week that you go like, you know, I knew that, I'm really applying that, some things in your life in that area are probably going fairly well. In which case, what I would urge you to do, number one, is pray. Pray for me as a communicator. And two, pray for the people around you. And just be, be actively thinking about, Lord, how can I help? How can I help my neighbor? How can I help my neighbor to, to with whatever area they might be a little stuck with? Because I've been stuck in those areas too. So, so the, the, the first liability, the first liability when you're looking at anything that with like Christian habits or sometimes this is referred to as the spiritual disciplines, 
The first liabilities, we just go, that is so basic that yeah, I don't even need to worry about it. That's the first liability. No, it's all, the fundamentals are vitally important. The second thing is equally a liability is that we, can, we start to make it all about the, you know, practicing the habit or practicing that particular discipline. Because some of us, and I'm, I'm, I'm pointing at you and three fingers are pointing at me, some of y'all are list makers. And you were the good kids in school who wanted to make sure that you checked off every single box. Uh-huh, that's you. I know. And that's me too. And the problem sometimes with those things, when we start talking about spiritual disciplines, I'm like, you need to do this and you need to do this. It starts to become about the list. And you start to be like, okay, I got that. 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 And we get so focused on the list that we miss the point. It can be a little bit like, just to jump back to a musical analogy, you're working on a, you're, you're working on a, working on learning your scales. And, 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 and you're so interested in it. I always wished I had more finger speeds, but, but if I could do, do these exercises long enough, I can do all the whole like needly, 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 all that cool stuff that I could do that. Um, but here's the, here's the thing, is you get really into doing the exercises and you forget that it's not about the exercises, it's about making music. Playing basketball is not about like, being in your, in your driveway, dribbling a ball and, you know, trying to make jump shots. It's about actually playing the game. And the spiritual disciplines, while they are valuable and we do need to give them our time and attention, the point of the disciplines is not in about getting this perfect checklist and look, I got everything done and now I can move on with my day the point of the disciplines is to draw near to Jesus. Jesus is the music. Jesus is the game. And he, he wants us to enjoy him and draw near to him. The disciplines can help us with that. The habits can help us with that. But they're not the point. They're not the point. But they are nonetheless really, really helpful. So today I wanted to give a little bit of time and attention to the thing that is, I would say, probably the most foundational habit, and it's this connect, that we look to connect with God, number one, through God's word, and number two, through God's people. So I want to challenge you and get you thinking about how am I connecting with God through God's word and through God's People. So let's start with, with, with God's word and what it means to connect with God through God's word. And what I'm going to be trying to encourage you to do is to develop a habit, if that habit isn't already in place, because for some of you it is, and that's wonderful, a habit of being in God's word on a daily basis and seeking God through his word on a daily basis in some way, shape, or form. Just being with God through God's word. So let's look at a couple of the kind of foundational passages of what the Bible says about itself. Let's start things with Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. And we're picking things up as the devil is trying to tempt Jesus. It's so interesting. Every single temptation and attempt for Jesus, Jesus has just been baptized. He's, had the, he's heard the voice from heaven. He's been affirmed as this is my son who I love. Uh, and, and then he goes off to be tempted. And every single thing the devil tries to get him to do is to get him to exercise his divine authority. And so the devil has just told him, if you are the son of God, tell these rocks to turn into bread. You could do it. Could he do it? Of course he could do it. Should he? No. And so Jesus gives this brilliant answer. Jesus answers, and he's quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 8 here. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So it gives us this powerful metaphor of, of what the Bible is like. The Bible is like food. 
It's like food. If we are separated from God's word, we get, we starve. We spiritually starve. Now, it's important to remember that not every person who is hungry feels hungry. Sometimes people are starving and they really cannot feel it. But they're still experiencing the effects of it. I believe we're in a culture that is starving for the word of God. You may not consciously feel the hunger, but you see the effects everywhere. God's word is like food. So if you, if you want to thrive in your faith, somehow or another, you need God's word as part of your diet, so to speak. And just like food has many different flavors, the Bible has many different flavors or different kinds of literature in there, and different kinds of food can be good for different points in life. I love popcorn. Who here loves popcorn? Oh, we just got an air popper, and we're like, oh, this is awesome. It's easy to make it, and I, and I can make lots of popcorn, and I love it. Popcorn is fantastic, but here's the thing. Is, is, it's actually not very nutritious. And sometimes that's great because you want like a low-cal snack. Okay, but it's, so there's some times where popcorn is fantastic and other times popcorn's not so great. And in similar ways in God's word, all of it is useful for us. And that's what Paul writes to, first, to uh, Timothy in his letter, 2 Timothy. All scripture is God-breathed and what's, what's the word? Yes. Useful. All of it. All of it is useful. Now, there's different liter genres of literature, so they might be useful in different ways and at different times, and some parts are maybe more universally practical than others, but all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God, and that's you, someone who's trying to follow God's ways in their life, might be thoroughly equipped, say that with me, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Thoroughly equipped. God's word thoroughly equips us. What do you think happens when we don't have God's word in his life, our lives? Are we thoroughly equipped? No. Why? Because it's like food. You're starving. You are hungry. And you're not, and you don't have all the, you don't have all the instructions that you need. We need God's word in our life in order to be thoroughly equipped. All of God's word is useful in one way or another. And then you have Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 through 11. For my ways, or my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways, are your ways, my, thank you, your ways, my ways, declares the Lord. As the, I'm going to get my reading glasses out. I appreciate you. Okay. Woo. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and sun come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth, making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purposes for which I sent it. This is one among many passages that reminds us that God's word is incredibly powerful. I mean, the Bible opens up with a story of, of God creating the world. And every time he is creating, he speaks. He speaks. And God said. God's word literally makes worlds. And if you think about it, the words that, that we bring into our lives, they create worlds as well. If, if your life is filled with, with godly, wise words, your life will become increasingly godly and wise. You ever notice if you, if you, if you hang out with people with that, like they got like sailor tongue? <laughs> And they, you know, they're, and they're, or you're listening to shows and, and they're, they're just cussing all the time. And I, I know it's, it, it, sometimes that's really common. And I'm not to say that, say that cussing is always, I, I don't want to just, I don't want to look down on people who cuss a lot. But here's what I noticed for me. And, and this is probably true for you as well. If you're around someone who's dropping F-bombs all the time, pretty soon in your mind, that, that language becomes normal. 
right? We, we, just, we just pick up, we, the, the words we consume become the words that, that flow out of us. Words create worlds. They create worlds. And God's word is incredibly powerful. So the more we have God's word in our life, the more we will, we will have a godly worldview with life. Lord, create your worlds inside of me. Help me to see the world through your eyes. That's why we need, among many reasons, why we need God's word. It is incredibly powerful. So here's a couple of little ideas. Um, in, in, just in getting into God's word if... Um, if, if you struggle with it at all. Um, first one is this, is if you're reading the Bible for the first time, start with the Gospels. So if you've got a paper Bible, see, it's going to be just over about the two-thirds mark. See if you can find Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Or if you're using a digital Bible on, on your phone, your tablet, look for Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Those are the stories of Jesus, where when Jesus was alive and Jesus was teaching, it tells the whole story of Jesus' life. And why that becomes so important for us is that Jesus really is the key to everything. He's the key for us making sense of life, and he is ultimately the key for us making good sense of Scripture. Because all of the Old Testament ultimately points to Jesus, whether that's in, wow, this is a big train wreck. They really need help. It all points to Jesus. Or all of the prophecies in the Old Testament of God will be sending a savior, this messianic king, that someday somebody will come to rescue the Israelites and ultimately all humanity from the mess we have got ourselves in. All of the Old Testament points to Jesus, and all of the New Testament either tells stories about Jesus or ultimately refers back to Jesus as it looks at the, the, the early church and how they are navigating what it means to, to live as Christ followers in a Greco-Roman culture, or the book of Revelation that looks at what will happen in the future to those who are following Christ. So get to know Jesus. He's the key to everything. Uh, I've used this illustration before, but it's still helpful. If you're, if you're trying to solve a thousand-piece jigsaw puzzle, every one of those puzzle pieces is valid and helpful, just like the, all Scripture is God-breathed. But we, we're, you're going to have a really hard time putting that thousand-piece puzzle together without the box. You want to see the picture of, of what, what these puzzle pieces actually lead to before you're going to have much hope of putting the pieces together accurately and well. Jesus is the box. He is the clearest picture of who God is because he is God. How did, what does God think about? Fill in the blank. Well, we ask, what did Jesus say about this? How did Jesus respond to this? What was Jesus' attitude about this? Jesus is the key to everything. So we start with the Gospels. We start with the Gospels. Okay, second thing is as you're reading, realize that the Holy Spirit is, is reading with you. So there'll be words that kind of catch your attention on any given day. Lean into that. Lord, are you trying to tell me something with that? Just trust that God is wanting to reveal himself through the word to you. So, yeah, what catches your attention, what bothers you, like any, anything that you go, oh, 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 I'm noticing this. Look for God there. God God's probably has something to say to you through his word in that, in that part of Scripture on that particular day. That's why, and you've, if you've read through the Bible, who here has read through the Bible several times? Okay, some hands going up, that's cool. Okay, and every single time you read through a passage or the Bible even as a whole, you'll notice new things. And that's not because it's changed. It's, it's because your situation has changed and God is present with you as you are reading it. So you've got, you've got the, the tour guide on your shoulder. The, the Holy Spirit is pointing out new things each time you visit. 
So there's always new things to be discovered in God's word. Notice it. Look for that. Um, Another thing that can be really helpful is look for the larger story. Now, this comes after we've read the Gospels, but when we see the entire arc of Scripture, of how God worked through the Israelites and and the the larger trends. And that's where studies like some of you are in the Bible recap group with Donna this year. I'm not going to make you... Yeah, I see some hands going up on that. Super good stuff. It helps us to see the larger story. I'm uh, doing a Bible in a year plan on YouVersion uh, with, with a Bible project. I highly recommend that. I think that's a very, very good resource because it helps us to see for any passage where it fits in the larger story of God's work. That's just really helpful. Because when we're reading the Bible, we're reading a really, really big book. It's a little bit like you, uh, you're, you sit down with a friend to watch their favorite movie, and they start at 45 minutes in, and then you watch a five-minute clip. Like, I, you know, your, your buddy's you know, nerding out, Luke, I am your father. He's like, that's amazing. You're like, I don't get it. Like the, the guy in the dark suit with the what? Why is he doing that? But we need to see the larger arc of the story to understand what's happening in any given moment. So that's really helpful. Here's the other thing that can be helpful is is, um, when when you're trying to read God's word, there's going to be spiritual battles happening around you. I mean, the devil does not want you to be in the word of God. So there's all sorts of little distractions. Here's one I found really helpful. Who here likes, like, that you, uh, well, Confession. Who here in the morning in the morning you are tempted? One of the first things you do, maybe before or even just after your cup of coffee, is you look at your smartphone. Right. These lovely little devices can do some pretty cool things. And many of the apps on them. All the cool stuff in YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Some of you are on X. I know because you're angry all the time. You know, but if you're, well, all of those things have really smart people who are helping those apps to become super addictive. So if you've ever had that thing where you're, you're on Facebook because you wanted to see what's happening with your friend's birthday party, and then 25 minutes later, you're like, how did I get into these reels? And you just kind of look up for a bit. What just happened to 25 minutes of my, my life? Confession? You ever been there? Okay. Somewhere, somewhere in a, in, a, in, a, in a big building is an app developer that just got a big bonus because they managed to make the app more addictive. That's how the world works. We are the product. But here's something that can help a little bit. I, um, let's put up the, there's a, a, a screenshot. This screenshot of my, uh, my phone, actually. Um, put the Bible app on the top level. Hide all the other garbage further down. So that when, when you do, open up your, your little, you know, phone device that if you're, if you're serious about being in the Bible, that it's right there. It reminds you. So feel free to put, put Facebook as many levels down as you need to and bring the Bible up as many levels as you, top level, top level. If you're, if you're going to use this crazy stuff, and, and, I'm, I'm, and there, is, there is value in, these, in technology, but hack your own system. Like, like, know that it's, it, the, the, the wrong stuff is going to distract you, so don't put the stuff that you know is going to be this, this time suck and this attention suck, don't put those things top level. Okay, that's helped me. So maybe that's help, that can help you. So number one, we're trying to get connected to God's word. Number two is connection involves God's people getting connected to other other people we can do life with. Like, Book of Hebrews puts it this way. Let us consider, Hebrews 10, 24, and 25, how we might spur, spur. If you're sitting next to somebody, kind of tap them on the shoulder or give them a little poke. That's spurring. Spur someone. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, you don't know them. Don't do that. Okay. Spur, spur. 
spur one another on towards love and good deeds. We're just kind of helping each other out. You can do it, buddy. You can do it. Um, Not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. Now, I know this is true about you because it's true about me. Every single brave thing you ever did in life had an accomplice. There was someone that, that helped you find the courage to do that brave thing that you, that you weren't certain you could do on your own. And, by the way, every truly dumb thing you did in life probably also had an accomplice. So choose the right accomplices. Right? We can help one another. We need community. We need community. We are the body of Christ. Each one of us is a part of it. But just like a severed body part is amazing, but gross, a severed body part cannot do very much on its own. It needs to be connected back to the body. Right. We thrive in community. We suffer in isolation. So we need to spur one another on. Now, um, so we need, we need encouragement. We need support. We need to be able to learn from one another. Um, now, if, if you're maybe feeling a little isolated, um, I just want to, I want to point out a couple of, of these connection group options for you. So... We've got some groups that they, all they're trying to do is have some fun together. Like, Anne, pickleball, right? Pick, she, she brought her pickleball paddle into worship? Wow, that is next level. <laughs> Praying for you, Mark. Praying for you. All right, okay, so that was next level. But if, but if you w- like pickleball, want to like pickleball, wonder what pickleball is, that's great. Some of you may, may be a little hesitant about joining like a formal Bible study right away, but you're a guy and you could, you could imagine going to a ball game or you could, you could imagine going axe throwing. Kevin's your man right there. Like just find a guy. These, these are guys, like they're, they're not even going to make you attend everything. You're just going to get on a list where a bunch of guys go, hey, we're going to go do something cool. Do you want to come? That helps to break the isolation. We've got a, we've got a seniors, uh, senior singles group. So if you're a senior and you're single, you can, they do dinners together. They go to movies together. They go to musicals. They do cool stuff. You can break the isolation. It's fantastic. There's a women's fellowship group that gets together on Saturday mornings and they eat. And, and more, and more stuff. I haven't been to one of these, but I know they are fantastic. And, and all I'm saying is, is you can find community. You can find community. And there's going to be others that are more specialized, like A-Let's group. We're looking at like anxiety. You can help one another out. You got like John and Mark's group that's going deep into the spiritual disciplines. You can feed your brain. There are, there are Loretta's group. There are so many great Groups to grow. Um, okay, I, I know I'm plugging this stuff pretty hard, but it's but the the cure. And you know, if you if you struggle again with that internal dialogue and you just have a hard time thinking, like understanding God's grace for you, talk to Jim. We can break the isolation. We can grow. We need one another. Now, here's one of the hard parts about community. Now, I'm going to bring up a Bible verse that, that you've probably seen on a wall because it just seems like so inspiring. So Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Who's heard this verse before? Yeah. It sounds great, doesn't it? Because it sounds all military and we're like swords and we're sharpening our swords and it's awesome because it's, you know, iron and all right, and it's great, except for like think about what that actually means in real life. So it uses the metaphor of iron is sharpening iron because it's, it's coming in contact with one another and sparks are flying. 
Relationally, what does that mean? See, there are people that God has strategically placed in your life who are annoying. (laughs) And when you interact with them, you see sparks. And you know that time? No, don't point. Just some, just serious. Just look at me. Just eyes up here. Up here, people. Okay, now. So, <laughs> no, eyes up here. Eyes up here. You know, we're not, this isn't, we're not blaming anybody. Okay, but there are times there are sparks because you know how you prayed, God, would you give me patience? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And you say, oh, God, why do you answer all, why do you answer those prayers? And other ones are like really frustrated. But, but, but that's how we grow, is by irritating one another. <laughs> and figuring out how to put up with other people's flaws. And, and, and they're starting to point ours out. And we don't like that very much. And that's how we grow. Ah. See, that's one of the reasons why we avoid community. Even though it's actually in our best interest. Because because real community is hard. Now, just just hear me carefully. I'm not talking about an abusive situation. There are situations where it is appropriate to set up, like, boundaries and... and, um, it might be good if you're wondering about whether somebody is just, you know, uh, maybe requires more grace or this is someone that I actually need to put some safe boundaries up. Talk to a third party, maybe a Christian counselor or, or a pastor or somebody just to discern through that. God's not calling you to be in an abusive situation. But, but, it's sometimes helpful to think about when, we, when we're in a group of people and there's some folks that are just kind of annoying, they kind of get under our skin, of going, okay, God, is this something that you're trying to, do, to grow in me? Are you teaching me how to be more loving and gracious? Is this someone you're actually using to reveal something about me that I didn't want to deal with? It's another reason why we need Christian community. Colossians, in chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, and we'll finish with this, is it's saying basically the same thing. It's just saying it in a nicer way. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, that's who you are, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, Gentleness and patience. Bear with each other. Bear with each other. And forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. That's how we grow. People make us mad, and we work through it. Yay. (laughs) So there's all these reasons, just like like there's spiritual distraction to keep you out of God's word, and and you tell yourself you're too busy, or you'll get around to it next week, or, and even though it's it's the very thing we need the most, like it's, it's our primary way, it's our most dependable way of connecting with God, through God's word. We also, we tend to avoid Christian community because honestly, there's some parts about it that are difficult. That kind of honesty, transparency, you feel vulnerable, it's icky, you don't like it. And you have to deal with annoying people. And that is God's means for maturing us. Working through the sparks so, just as we close, just want you to think about, so of those two, of the, of the, two, as, the two aspects of, of the habits of connection, which are the one of the two is the one that God's most calling you to grow in in this next season, or maybe our next five weeks together? Maybe you could start a, 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 a version plan 
or pick up the gospel, pick up the book of Matthew and just start reading. Just get to know Jesus. Something, some step. What is God inviting you into with growing in God's word? Or, or maybe that's an area that's pretty solid for you. And that's fantastic. How are you doing with community? Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> with just having people in your life that you, that you can relate to. Has God given you the gift of an annoying person in your life that, you can, that can deepen your capacity to love and show patience and grace? Or, or, or maybe you don't yet have like a connection group. You don't have a posse. Like we, like to, we love to talk about like those 2 a.m. friendships. You know, people that you know well enough that when you're going through something tough, you can actually like call them up and say, hey, I need some help. And, they, and like they're already dialed into your life enough that they go, all right, I'm on it. We long for you to have those kinds of connections in life. However you get there, whatever exactly that looks like. What is God inviting you into today? So just invite us for a moment, just to bow our heads, close our eyes, and just listen to God. Holy Spirit, you are here. You're working in this room right now. Lord, show each one of us what that next step for each one of us might be. Lord, thank you for your word. That's like food for us. Where every part of it, in one way or another, is useful to us. Lord, help us to be people of the word. Lord, thanks for community. That grows and deepens character. Even the annoying parts of community. Lord, show each one of us what a step forward with community would look like. And now, friends, I'm just going to be quiet for a moment and just allow you, you and the Lord, just to talk about it and just see how he leads you. So Lord, thank you that you lead and guide each one of us. We pray all these things in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. I invite us to stand. We're going to sing a song of a blessing. So the first part, we're just going to kind of sing. And you can eyes forward. We're going to kind of learn the song. And as we sing it, uh, maybe even the second time, come back on those same words. I invite you to then start to turn to some of the people around you. Make some eye contact with somebody. Because if we're going to do Christian community, this is what it looks like. That we be people who try to bless one another. Sing it with me. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his for you and give you peace. Let's sing that again, only this time. Turn to somebody close to you. A little awkward eye contact. Oh. Okay, there you go. And let's sing it again. The Lord bless you and keep you make his 
face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. So we have the privilege, have, please have a seat. We have the privilege of coming to the. We'll figure this out. Hey, oh. hey, hey, hey. There it is. There it is. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> So we have the privilege of coming to the table. It's so beautiful that the very center of the church, especially the early church, wasn't about a fancy building. 
It was about a table. We talk about a church family. Families meet around tables, and we still do. I'm going to invite our ushers to come forward as we come to the table. We each have something to bring to the table. And so as baskets are being passed, it is an opportunity for us to think about generosity in our lives, and we'll be talking about that in upcoming weeks. But it's a reminder that as you come to the Lord's table, you've got something to bring to the table. You've got talent and time and resources and wisdom and prayer. And we get to bring it all together and say, Lord, would you use it? So Lord, would you use it? Every gift, the gifts that are given online, the gifts that are given right now, in the, the connection cards, the next steps, Every one of them, Lord, use them, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So as baskets are being passed, we're reminded of that final meal that Jesus had with his disciples. They're meeting in a room. And Jesus knew that he was, he, that he was gonna die soon. His disciples may not have understood it in the moment, but he wanted to give them something that they would never, ever, ever forget. And so in the context of this meal, he takes bread, he breaks it, he gives thanks for it, and he starts to pass it around. And he says to his disciples, take and eat. This bread is my body, and it's given for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, probably Elijah's cup. And he said to his disciples, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, remembering me. And so the church historically has done that ever since that day. We eat bread, and we drink from a cup together. We share juice or wine and we remember Jesus who gave his body and shed his blood and made us family and gives us forgiveness and mercy and grace and a brand new life in him. So as our, as our um, communion servers are coming to their stations, I want to lead us in a prayer and then Heather's going to give us a a little bit of the lowdown on what to do next. And, and, and it's an opportunity for us to, to connect with God and ultimately with each other as well. As, as somebody serves you bread and offers you a cup and reminds you personally that Jesus gave his body for you and Jesus shed his blood for you. So Lord, help us to not forget what you've done for us. Thank you that you gave your body and shed your blood. Lord, we don't take it lightly. Thanks for all that means in terms of our forgiveness, all that means in terms of our identity. And so, Lord, we remember you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so. I might need to turn it on. There we go. We'll get it figured out. So, we have four communion stations. Um, we have two in the front and two to the rear. And there you will find a plate that has um, cookies in resemblance of the bread. And there will be a cup with uh, grape juice. And so you will take the communion bread and the attendant will give it to you and say that this is Christ's body broken for you. And you will take your bread and you will dip it into the cup and the attendant will say, this is Christ's blood shed for you. And the, the tables are open to anyone, whether you attend here or not. And we would love for you to join us online as well. And it doesn't need to be anything specific. What we're doing is we're remembering Jesus, how he broke his body and he shed his blood for our sins. 
And so we invite you to find crackers or juice or anything at home so that we can partake together. And that's just something that we do because we're all family, whether we see you in person or if you're online. And so we invite you to the table. And we just say, come because you may and never because you must. Let's eat together. And while communion is being served, there are prayer stations around the room. We'd love to have you come and, and have a brother or sister in Christ pray for you. Sings 
my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art. I'll figure it out. Amen. <laughs> I'd like to invite the kids up to lead our congregation in praying the Lord's Prayer. And there's, um, I'll just try to, <laughs> I'll just try to stay out of the way a little bit. Okay, come on, guys. Come on, guys. Here we come. All right. So we're going to have Elijah lead today. Oh, come on, right girl. There you go, buddy. All right, so let's turn around. Okay, let's turn around and face everybody. Do you think we could do that? Okay, all right. And I'll hold the mic for you, okay? You're going to be all right. All right, I want to hear everybody's voices really loud and proud, okay? Just like we did in class, okay? All right, so here we go. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be my name. Thy kingdom comes. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgo those that sins against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Fine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, we got just a couple of quick announcements as you're heading out the door. Number one, what do you think we're going to serve on Taco Sunday? Pizza. Taco! So it's almost taco time. All right, so make sure to stick around for some tacos. Well, we're going to be good. Very nice. So the tacos in just a couple of moments. And, they're, and as, as they're where you're getting the tacos, because the tacos are all out in the foyer, all out in the foyer are all our connection group leaders. Connection group leaders, I'm going to give you a 30-second head start. Go! Okay. Connection group leaders out there, so they can ask your questions about their connection group, and you can get signed up for pickleball, or for a Bible study, or for axe throwing, or whatever, whatever it is that God has for you as your next, as your next step because this week uh, our connection group start up again super thursday starts up again i hope you can join us thursday night 5 30 to 6 30 uh, all church potluck meal and then a wide variety of groups all right let's going to close with a word of prayer some of you are already sitting sitting down some of you are standing up that's great but grab somebody's hand and let's close with a word of prayer together lord thank you that we get to be your people Thank you, Lord, that you feed us by your word. Thank you, Lord, for the many ways we experience your goodness, including tacos. And Lord, we thank you that you, that you give us the privilege of doing life together. So Lord, as we, as we connect with you this week, and as we connect with one another this week, Lord, we pray that we would, we would experience your love. We would experience the love of Jesus so that we can love like Jesus, to one another, to our families, to our community, and to a world that desperately needs to know you. Send us out with your blessing, we pray. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord and enjoy.